Andre will be about to the 17. I think one by one we'll see some new clean jerseys coming into this game. In fact, leaving Rob Stazak. Rob was a little questionable, left guard, and an ankle injury suffered this week, had knee surgery earlier in the season. Came back from that a little quicker than they anticipated. Played most of the way here tonight. Did a good job, too. There were some nice uh, holes up that middle for Lou Medina. And if you look at Stasak, he's only a junior, 6'2", 200. They list him at 285 pounds. So <laughs> he's going to grow next year. <laughs> so he's one of the big dogs that are coming back to, to try and stretch that streak even more. Tom Lenahan, the left tackle, is a sophomore. Stasak, you said, is a junior. They'll have to replace Tim Tian. He's a senior. His backup, Will McDermott, is a junior. Jason Kalina and Colin Johnson on the right wow. side are both juniors as well. Wow. It's not fair. That's, <laughs> they had nothing this year. Now they got, oh, wow. This little guy's tough, too. Tim Lohman will make it on down just outside the 10. And we know Pop can run, so they, they're going to put Pop in that backfield. He's, he's, he's huge. I mean, 6'2", 170 pounds. He's four inches taller than Medina, and I think he might be a little quicker. Watch it now, watch it. I'm not saying a word on that one. You'll have to answer to that. Of course, I'm, I'm the guy that'll get the call on, calls right. on the sports zone. That's right. My wife answers all my phone, Louis, so don't try and call me. Tim Loman will head to the corner of the end zone. Did he get there? Yes. Wow. Tim Lowe's third touchdown of the season. And I'll tell you, that little guy, he just scooped too, but he turned that corner, and it was nothing but a desk uh, and a uh, wide open field. Brown has just pushed the lead to 46 to nothing. Watch his cutback. He just spreads out and dances to the end zone. He gets his head in the, in the scene. And he adjusts the ball in his, in his arm, in his right arm, puts, puts it back, back under his left, and watch, he just finds his way to the corner. Now, that, take a look at that. Is that amazing? Of course, we've talked about Tim Lowe in the last couple of years. He has not a full left arm, but yet he shifted the ball from his full right arm, just shifted it to his left side because that's the way he was going. That's, that's, that's amazing. amazing. You know what? That's, that's the way he's been taught. And they, and they probably say it doesn't matter if you have a head. No matter what the arm is, the technique is put it left, and he has done that by through his practice and technique. Protecting the ball. Excellent. You know, those that have young kids that come out there and play the game, you know that they have a lot of heart, and, uh, and you really go out and cheer for those guys. Six plays, 42 yards on that touchdown drive. Long 12 yard run. Makes it a 47 to nothing lead here for the Celtics. Get a look at it one more time. This drive, Matt Sefner says, okay, let's give a few extra guys a shot. There's some clean jerseys out there. Loma does it itself from here. Let's head down to that sidelines. And if it's the near sidelines, it has to be a happy one. Lee Turbo standing by. Thanks, Dave. I just came back from the Manuka sideline, and they know they're down 47 nothing here in the fourth quarter. And the thing is, they're still battling, they're still playing hard. And this is a game that Manuka coach Dan Sharp, when he takes a look at the films over the course of the winter, he's going to look at it and say, you know, we were playing with props in the first quarter, and with the secondary people coming back and their backfield coming back, hey, they're going to be good next year, folks. This is a case, Lee, where Dan said, you know, I have all these juniors. He, he thought that this team would gel as they had the playoffs, but he thought it would happen next year. Yeah, he did, and the thing that made them believers is when they beat Morris in the first round of the playoffs, that's when they knew they had a good team, a playoff caliber type of team. Uh, they followed that up with that win over Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin last week, 31-17. It is no fluke that they have gotten here. And the fortunate part for them is they had to beat top-ranked team in the state, Providence Catholic. Return out to the 42-yard line. Adam Zook again, he's been a busy man on kickoff returns. It's great that they get all these players coming back, but again, they better get ready, man. They got to gear up more because this is probably the Celtics going to be sitting right there again in their path, and they better be ready. The Indians would like to 
like the score, score here. here. Their, Their fans came out early. Proud of fans for waiting for that guy to do something. All Robert Cruz did was engineer a 47 point night. So let's the ball. Get a lot of green jerseys. You can see the numbers on the jerseys. A lot of fresh players in there for the Celtics on the defensive side. Class 4A, the bottom half of the bracket is belong to Providence. The only question is, who's going to come out of that top one? Normal or Metamora? That ball game being played Saturday afternoon, and Providence coaching staff will pile into the cards and head off to Metamora to catch the Redbirds. Normal survived a scare up here a few weeks ago and they won late in the game against Oak Forest, so Metamora going into that ball game is the favorite. We've got actually Class 5A locally as well. We haven't even mentioned this one tonight. Joliet Catholic Academy. They will play Rockton Hananiga. Rock Island and Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel figuring to outscore Rock Island in the bottom half. But Mac JCA and Rockton. Rockton's undefeated. But you know what? They give up some yards on the ground. And that just happens to be the Hilltopper's strength. Exactly. If, if James Randall is helping and gets that ball about 30 times, he'll get his 200-plus uh, yards. And they're going to need it. Uh, Hananiga has a great offense. But I think the, the Hilltoppers defense will be ready for them. It should be a great game tomorrow afternoon at Memorial Stadium. And we remind you that our 6A playoff coverage will continue and it will be live. This will be a game that we carried live throughout the entire Chicagoland suburban area. A million people have a chance to see this one. The Lincoln Way Knights hosting the Palatine Pirates. That will be coming to you live starting at 5.30 Saturday afternoon to kick off at 6 o'clock. And during halftime of that game, we will have highlights of several of the other playoff games will be played during the course of Saturday afternoon's play, including that Joliet Catholic and Rockton Hananiga game. So you are set for an af late afternoon and early evening of football that could prove to be spectacular. Lee, can you imagine a million people and 500,000 will be on the sideline with you? <laughs> That's about as many as not a here at Providence. <laughs> You're used to it down there. I tell you what, that should be a great ball game. I tell you what, folks. You should get there about 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon because there's no way in heck you're going to get a parking spot over in Lakeway. The gate's open at 5, so play accordingly. And I tell you what, Lakeway Palatine, you know, the ITA SA probably did a good job of seating. And you know how much I love those guys. But number one or two team in 6A playing for a right to go to state finals tomorrow night should be a great one. And a number of people here tonight. Well, I'd probably talk to more of our TCN sports fans tonight than in any single game this year. Wanting to know, you know, well, that game's going to be on live tomorrow night? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's great, that's great. You know, when will our, this Providence game be shown? Oh, that's great. There's a lot of happy people in New Atlantics. Timeout called on the field. It comes with 6 minutes and 11 seconds to play here. And we will take a break. Providence on top, 47 to nothing. They are just biding their time. They like hop on the bus and head to normal. Settle the score. Bo versus Galata 2. This month on Continental Pay Per View. This CCN Sport High School Game of the Week is brought to you by Continental Cable Vision. Celebrating 10 years of local sports coverage. Happy you could join us for our coverage of playoff football here on Channel 3, along with Lee Turnbow and Mac McLaughlin. I'm Dave Bernhardt. Adam O'Reel is the quarterback. You see him number 12 there talking to Dave Ernst. O'Reel, 6'175 pound junior. Second down, 11 after Tim Lohman lost a yard. And they are in the absolute worst part this field. It hasn't really slowed down that Providence Express, has it? 47 points on the scoreboard for the Celtics. That much running there. Running room there. Again, Tim Loman will get the call on the carry. 
while they're running, the ball wrapped in the middle and just trying to get that clock and try to get out of here. With a 47-point score, but you better look out because these Providence uh, guys with fresh jerseys, they like the score also. <laughs> This field was resodded this past summer after it took a horrible beating last fall during the state playoffs with some crazy weather that we had at that time. I believe they'll have to get the greenskeeper out here to oh, yeah, do a little work this coming spring and summer. It's destroyed. They may have gotten a break because the rain is predicted for Saturday. Of course, that will make our game tomorrow night, Saturday night at Lincoln Way, all the more interesting. And it would be nice to have uh, Astro Turf. For years, games were played by high school players on, in mud and in the sun and the heat and the rain. So that's why it's a game that's outdoors and you play it. I've never played in an Astrodome or indoor dome, so I don't know what that's like for football. I know Lee has said many times that if he ever wins the lottery, he's going to build a dome. <laughs> build a dome. Good for baseball, football. Put it right here in the Will County area. It's like they said, will they come? Will they come to his field? Oh, real with the handoff? Ooh. The Indians will swarm down Mr. Loman on that carry. That's the time left as we wind down here. It's I think, kind of an impatient crowd. And I, I say impatient for the Providence Catholic because Quite frankly, they have probably waited all year, have tolerated now 13 ball games just to get the chance to go back down and play at Illinois State University for a state championship. And they truly believe that they're the best team in the state, not in 4A, but 5A and 6A. And uh, they just on a mission to prove that they're as good as they, they really are. Oh, nice hit. Cluck makes the catch and pays the price. And again, after the, the MC side, those fresh green jerseys, they were going down the field like it was the first play of the ball game. That's Celtic pride. You know, the one thing you think about is Providence came into this season winning two consecutive state titles with undefeated records. They enter a new conference. The pressure that has been on these players, whether they would care to admit it or not, with the expectations of doing it again, of keeping a winning streak alive. And they have absolutely produced above and beyond I think expectations. That to me is amazing. Yeah. New quarterback in the game. New running back Nick Paselli is the quarterback now for Manuka. He gives off to Paul Nicole. And, and I like this. I like what Dan Sharp is doing. He's giving his his young players something that uh, they've earned this right to get into the, the final game of the season. Uh, and you say with, with three minutes it means a lot. A lot of these kids are juniors and seniors. Some seniors haven't played a lot this year. Are getting their chance to say, yes, I played in that game against uh, Providence. The score will change. They won't tell you the score later in the future years. Nothing doing for Sean Gallick. Well, it's one of those things that it, you know, it's really one of the moments that I enjoy probably about the playoffs more than anything else. Now, we've had great crowds, size of crowds, all throughout our coverage this year. To me, it's been a phenomenal year attendance-wise. But tonight I happen to be walking on the field when Manuka made their appearance yes. on the field. And the Manuka stands went crazy. You know, the yeah. Providence came out at the same time. And it's just a feeling whether you're a starter or a reserve, maybe you never play. But it's a feeling that if you're a high school player, you have to treasure that moment. And not many people get that opportunity. Exactly. And again, I can say this is like coming from infancy to, 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 to your uh, adolescent stage to manhood. Well, that's... Selly was down. I'm but, too happy about the hitting. Uh, but it goes back. Those people in Manuka now have a chance, opportunity. They've walked the path of the big dogs. And when you say that as an old cliche, is that you've got to walk that path before you can be successful and, and find out the, the pitfalls. Well, the pitfall is that they've got to get a lot better to be Providence Capital. And I think that's what they're going to work on throughout the program uh, to put those ingredients in there. Kicking it away from Scott Peters. But if you see Danny Sharp after the game, he will still have that smile on his face <laughs> he sure and will. that optimistic atmosphere and say, hey, we're going to be better next year. And that's, that's what you got to love about that young man. 
well, as Lisa, you know, he will look at the films and you know, make whatever adjustments. But it's hard to say. I mean, I don't, I don't think he can say, you know, guys, we did not play well tonight. I, I think it was a case of the field. I think hurt their offense a little bit more than it hurt Providence. And Providence is a little bit more of a straight line type offense if necessary. Of course, with the double wing, you're slanting and having to make cuts in there. They were just overwhelmed by a team that is absolutely on the top of their game. Right. Flag down in the middle as Tim Lohman will try to move a pile forward. Well, the thing that people don't realize about the Celtics is that great speed. We talk about they got good size, they they got great athleticism, but down the line, offense and defensive, they've got speed. That's the thing. They hit you and you don't realize it. They're down the field 70 yards on an interception for a touchdown. Providence has scored 47 points tonight. They've gotten it from their offense, from their kickers, from their defense, and from their special teams. They have allowed zero points, and Matt, I'm going to put you on the spot. Providence has played now 13 games. How many shutouts have the Celtics thrown this year? None. This will be the first if they hang on, yeah. I remember seeing that from the, from the score. <laughs> I'd like to thank our executive producer, Roger Connor. Our producer director is Mike McEwen, making this possible. Bring you this playoff coverage. And again, thanks to everybody else who will be doing this game, others, and out there at Lincoln Way tomorrow night. You know what? Let me make this point, too. This will be the last broadcast that we will be doing exclusively for the Will County area. Our Lincoln Way broadcast on Saturday evening will, as we said, be stretched out to the Palatine area to the Evanston area. Everywhere that gets Continental Cable Vision will get our live broadcast. Let me ask the people of Will County, all you people that have come up to Lee and Mac and me here and, and con congratulate us and thank us for our coverage, would you do me a favor? If you see one of our cameramen down anywhere, would you please pat them on the back? What a fabulous job they have done this season as well. Tim Lohman is dragged down by Ryan Cluck with under a minute to play. But back to our, our camera guys. You see the, the breath there coming out of Robert Cruz. We've had rainy games, we have had cold games, we've had hot games, so our guys have been there for you. Let them know you appreciate it. Okay, decision time. Lee, I know you're trying to get something going down there. And we have a top jock decision to make. Robert Cruz, Louis Medina, Matt Yurimovich. Medina, about 180 yards, he has three touchdowns. Yurimovich, part of a defensive unit that's not allowed a point. Lee, you did not win tonight, I'm sorry. Well, I tell you what, the talk on the sidelines is they wanted the whole province defense to win because they kept on asking me, Lee, who'd you pick, who'd you pick, who'd you pick? And I had to tell him, and I tell you what, hey, Celtics fans, state final city, third years in a row. Oh, that didn't answer my question. Hey, who did you vote for? Oh, you, you got to vote for Yurimovich. <laughs> we'll, we'll let our crew and the truck decide, and we want you to join us tomorrow night in Lincoln Lake. The Providence Catholic, the winners here tonight, 47 to nothing. They are going down to the state finals in Cornwall. And let's head directly back down to Lake Turnbull. Lake. Bobby. Third year in a row, state finals. I tell you, the winning streak, this has got to be sweet, especially on your home field. Uh, I really wanted to go out on my last game as a Providence Celtic on this field, a winner, and uh, it's, you know, I'm so proud of these guys. Uh, I personally was a little disappointed in my play, but that's why the guy next to me, is, he's so good. You know, we can rely on him, and, and uh, next week, you know, if they, if they do something to shut him down, then I'm just going to step up and play again. Uh, great job tonight. Yeah, Louie, I tell you what, field conditions, you know, kind of took away your long runs, but you kept on pounding and pounding, and the offensive line did a great job opening holes for you tonight. You can't say enough about the offensive line. I mean, those guys are juniors and a sophomore and one senior, and they're just blowing people off the line, and they're, I mean, they have so much heart, it's pitiful. And that's what really, you know, signifies our team is how much heart we got. And you got to give Manuka credit tonight because they played you tough, especially the first half. This ball game could have been 2017 very easily in the first half. Manuka, I mean, they were a good, they were a very good team. I mean, they came out with a good defensive plan, but I mean, you know, me and Robert, it's gonna hard to defend us. So, hey, I tell you what, congratulations, you two guys. Good luck next week. Hey, go get a shower because you guys smell bad. Defense, defense. So see, I tell you, hey, what, what did I tell you guys? The thing is that the defense, your Emovich, gotta be the jack of the week. Hey, I'm gonna try to grab some more guys. Congratulations, Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give you some numbers on Robert Cruz. 10 of 20 for 127 yards for the first time this season. Robert goes without throwing a touchdown pass. On the other side, Louis Medina, 23 rushes, 178 yards. Louis, 
scores three times. Providence Catholic throws that shutout 47 to nothing. Dave Pop, a 59 yard punt return. Matt Ryder, a 50 yard interception return. Billy Schultz with a pair of field goals and several extra points, and it all adds up to a convincing victory, a victory back that. I don't know, maybe the final score will surprise some people, but I think a lot of people will pick up the paper tomorrow morning, tune into our broadcast and say, you know what, this, this team, team is that good. They are. They are. They're genuine. They've done a good job. And uh, whoever they face, man, tomorrow or normal, better be ready because uh, these Celtics come down to, uh, to take the state championship. It would be their third consecutive, their fifth overall. Recapping the scoring, Louis Medina, 23 seconds into this game, actually 43 seconds into the game, a two-yard run. That's after he broke the opening play for 66 yards. Shull, the 32-yard field goal. Medina, a one-yard run. It was 17 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. 20 to nothing at the end of the first half as Billy Shull added a field goal. And in that third quarter, three touchdowns. One defensive by Ryder. Louis Medina, the four-yard touchdown run. The scoring was closed out by Tim Lowman's 12-yard touchdown run. Dave Pop electrified the crowd in the third quarter. 59-yard punt return coming your way right now. And Dave Pop turned this ball game into the route at 40 to nothing. The single most exciting play of the night. Great run by Pop. And again, I, I think he's the fastest man on that team. <laughs> you know, it's easy for you to say. You didn't say that when he had Louis Medina. Lee had Louis Medina down there. 47 zip, the final score here tonight. We're waiting for Lee Turnbow to grab a few of the coaches, players, or what have you as Providence Catholic has finished shaking hands with Manuka. And again, we mentioned the Manuka Indians, and we would hope their fans as well would you know, say, hey, you know, we can, in a way, just kind of forget about the result of this game. Let's remember the month of November that we had. Manuka had never won a playoff game in their history until they upset the Morris Redskins 29-28 in overtime, and then ended up defeating Springfield, Sacred Heart, Griffin last week to get themselves into this position. It came up just a bit short tonight. Well, more than a bit short when you're playing Providence Catholic. Final score, 47 to nothing here in our TCN Game of the Weekend. A reminder, coming up live Saturday evening, afternoon actually, 5.30 pregame, 6 o'clock kickoff. We have that 6A semifinal live from Lincoln Way, the Lincoln Way Knights and the Palatine Pirates right here on Channel 3. Portly Turbo and Port Mac McLaughlin, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Hope you enjoyed this one, everybody. The Celtics will be looking for state championship number three in a row next week. So long, everybody.
Russian and Russian passing, receiving, sacks, offense and defense, ESPN of course.